Yeah, we are not live. We are not live, <laughs> but we are. Hello. Hello, lovely YouTuber. Hello, lovely Gary. How Hi. Today? Oh, we're good. Very good. Yeah. Very um, good. If you need a weather update here in Somerset, it's raining. It's raining. It doesn't know when to stop. It was raining yesterday. It's raining today. I'm not losing the spring vibe, though. I'm still going with it. I still feel spring-like. Still feel hopeful. Still yes. feel hopeful. Yes, today we're recording on the 31st of March. It's a Friday. It's the last day of March. Apparently spring is, well, it is here. It, it, mm. it has arrived, but we are waiting in the UK. But we hope that wherever you are, the sun is shining. And that's just because Gary and I are here now in your life. So um, <laughs> that should be enough. <laughs> anyway get on with it Rachel they're shouting at the screen please do hit the subscribe button we would love to have you as part of our crafty monkey gang and also the like button as well it's really important if you like things if you send an emoji to us if you leave a comment not only do we love it and we love to comment back yes one of those buttons down there yeah. but also it means that it pushes it out into the algorithm because it shows that you're interacting with our stuff so if you do like anything we do we would just love a little like of course if you'd like to buy us a coffee and donate to the channel you can as well uh, but no pressure just to have your company is enough so this is where gary and i have a little play and we do a little crafty exercise every friday and then we also do a bit of mindfulness as well and the idea is to make you stop for 20 minutes we have a full playlist of these tea time tutorials and it's about yes mindfulness and play and creativity but i've got to tell you We've got about 35 of these tea time tutorials. And since we started doing these, me being the student with a wonderful talent of Gary Mills here being the teacher, my skills have actually improved. Mm -hmm. So it's not just mindfulness and enjoying yourself. It's also about learning skills. And my drawing has improved, my painting, my use of colour and my freedom of expression, really. That's what I would say, Gary. I've just got freer, haven't I? And um I'm just enjoying it, not being so sort of precise about everything. So hopefully you'll go on that journey as well. And you can pick up our videos. They are timeless. Use them whenever you want. So if you want to skip ahead to that crafting exercise, you can press the button below because I will put a time code for you. But if you want to stick around, Gary and I will just have a bit of what is the meaning of life chat for about three or four minutes. So if you go in, see you later. Bye. And if you stay in, keep with us. <laughs> So lovely, Gary, every week I throw something at you. And um, I had a conversation with my teenage daughter this week. And, you know, I think teenagers have got it tough. She was struggling with comparison, uh, comparisons and comparing herself to other people. And I remember this great quote, and I just thought about it today and thought this would be really good, I think, for us to talk about. Yeah. And it was from a guy called Gary V, who is um, one of these entrepreneur guys who is out there putting the waving the flag for positivity and he said and he said this about when you're starting your own company but I think it's relevant whatever he said whenever you are looking at your next door neighbor's garden and it doesn't mean literally it means your business competitor's garden or in this case she's looking at other dancers whenever you're looking at those people and seeing how green their grass is your grass on your side is dying because you're not watering your own lawn. You're watching someone else water theirs. A comparisons, comparing yourself to others and what that can do to the soul. Mm. Yes, it can. It can knock you because you're always looking for what's best in the other person you're looking at or the other thing that you're looking at. So you're going to be like, it's, it's giving you like... You feel that you are not worthy or you haven't got what they've got. Well, actually, you don't know the whole story, do you? They might be looking at other people and thinking they're actually lacking in something and they might have envy. And in fact, sometimes when you actually have a conversation with someone, you think, oh, my God, I always envied you from afar. I was really jealous of what you had and everything like that. Actually, they might turn around and say, well, actually, I saw what you had and I was jealous of you. And so that's just do we make this make believe that we are? you know, thinking the way we're lacking or we're not as good as someone we're looking across. I think oh, they've got everything. Now, I'm not saying that, say, for instance, in business or something that you want to aspire to be. So you look at your competitor. You look at that person that perhaps is really like, you think he's looking, looking amazing. It might be just the way they look, the way they dress and everything. 
don't spend a lot of energy analyzing it too much but just ask yourself some questions are like why why what is it about them that i'm finding that i'm lacking in and they've got more of and then apply that to yourself so think to yourself well actually um maybe i need to do this i need to water my garden a little bit more if i put some oh they're putting on um some fertilizer onto their grass oh i'll put some fertilizer onto mine and mine will get just as good if not better and you don't need to just look at one person, maybe look at a couple of people that perhaps, why do you think that they're better than you? And what is the elements that, that you think is better? And do you, need, do you need to take them on the board or have you got qualities that are actually outshine those other qualities? So there's a few things going on there and it is a minefield and you can go down spirals, down rabbit holes and everything thinking that you're in lack, but you're not. Yeah, and I think that's interesting what you've said. I think, yes, have a look around at other people. Obviously, if you're a business, you are going to look at other people and see what they're doing. But don't ever compare yourself no. because everybody is individual. Everybody is unique. It's like going back to teenagers, the whole thing of comparing yourself on social media. Social media is fake. And I think we'll end it with John Legend's words in that song when he says, which he wrote for his wife, uh, oh. all of me loves all of you all your curves and all your edges, all your perfect imperfections. Mm. I think that's such a beautiful line. I love all of yeah. your perfect imperfections. So beautiful. And that's what we need to do for ourselves. Love your perfect imperfections because everybody has got imperfections. And that's why we're all perfect. As long as we keep our souls and hearts open and keep trying to grow. Lovely. Okay, well, I hope someone got something out of that. Let's now go into crafting and see if somebody can get something out of this. This is where Gary finally takes over and I shut up for about 20 minutes. <laughs> well, I will be I will be making squeals of joy throughout. Right. But Gary, over to you. What are we doing today? Okay, let me bring this into shots on the here. We are going to do this. Now, you might have seen this on my social media. I did this. This was done so quick yesterday. I just needed some decorated paper to cover a journal. I'm doing journal book binding at the weekend and I wanted to cover that everyone else could do the same so I'm thinking well what can we do and I just love so I think circles make a great design like a surface pattern if you just hit on the theme of circles then that's what we're going to be doing and it's really nice to can repeat so some of these circles on this piece of paper are stenciled some of them are free drawn and then we've worked into them as well so we've done several things within this piece of paper it's just on i mean you could use copy paper but i've just used some it's not expensive it's just cartridge paper but it could be it's the you know i'm just making this to cover something you could even you know sometimes we get cold short when we're trying to we've got to give a present to someone that i've got the present i've forgotten the wrapping paper here's a chance to make some really nice wrapping paper i've used tones of pink some red but you could use any tones but keep it tonal rather than lots of different colors in this project i know some of the other times we've used other colors but i'm just going for tonal colors my theme it's quite girly well sort of a feminine sort of like feel vibe to it so i've gone for pinks but it doesn't have to be okay right so i'm gonna put that to the side for a minute so how did i do it so you need a piece of paper you need something to mix some paint up in and i've used some I'm just using some acrylic paint today. Um, I know we've used watercolors before and you could use watercolors, you could use inks. Um, and again, if you haven't got any paint, you could do this with really strong coffee. So you could do this same idea with coffee if you haven't got any colors with you at all. And you need some paintbrushes, a largest paintbrush. You can see you probably, you could paint the skirting board with that, bit of a household big brush. But then you just need and there's an ordinary sort of a widish brush for the painting. This is going to come into play later. So I'm going to put that to one side. We've got our paints, um, some jam jars of water or pots of water. One clean, clean water, and one that you're going to dip in and out the brush. So one that's going to become a bit more pinky as we go on. What else have I got? Ah, and I've got some coloured like sort of pencils. So I've got some pencils within my pinky tone. So I've got reds and pinks, and then I have cheekily introduce a little bit of a sort of a beigey orange color as well and just thought well mm, that might work into it also i've got a hair dryer to dry things off as we go along right i'm gonna put that to one side how'd you get started well first of all you're going to do a little bit of stenciling and you're going to you're going to just get another piece of either quite firm paper um could be a piece of cardboard thin card and you're just by hand 
you're just with a pencil or a biro, you're just going to draw two circles. So sort of one circle but it's a bit like a bean, but it's sort of a, a circle-ish. It can be oval, could look like an Easter egg, doesn't matter. And then a smaller one. So one big, one small. And then I want you to just cut them out, cut them out with either, you can cut them out with a blade or you can cut them out with a pair of scissors. And then you're going to end up, this is the one I'd use. So two, so this is your stencil. This is what you're going to use to just put in the paint with. And we're going to move around the page, putting some paint. So you're going to, just mix. So you can have, a, I've got this little palette thing going on here. And if you've never seen this before, what I've done is I've just put, so it keeps my paint from drying out. I put a piece of kitchen roll in the bottom, a little bit of water, and then I put a piece of greaseproof paper on the top. And it's really nice and cold and it stops your paint drying out. So it's just a little tip for you. And I think we did it way back in one of our early um, tea time tutorials. So if you want to go back and have a look at that, you can. Yeah. And I'm going to use a little bit this one. What's this colour called? Because people do like so. This is called primary magenta. I think you've just got what colours on your tube, Rachel? What have you got? You've got yes, a red colour. I have well, mine is just brilliant. Oh, brilliant red. I'll bring mine in because we do we normally go for um for different colours, Gary and I, but we've both gone yeah. for things today. It'll be interesting to see how different they turn out. But yeah, yes. red acrylic. And I have to say, this was from one of the oh no, look, it's from WH Miss, but um the other one that is from one of those, um, you know, craft stores thing. And, yeah. Well, I'll show you, look, that it says on the thing, two pounds. Two pounds, yes. So you can pick up these paints very inexpensively. You can. You really can. And so, you know, once you start getting a bit sort of into your artwork and things like that, have a little look around. There's a lot of high streets like um, stores that sort of do cheaper art materials. And if you just want to start out and experiment, they're ideal. So you're not doing a big investment in like financial investment into your artwork. I'm just going to put some white. In fact, I'm going to put um, just a little bit. If you look in comparison, I've got just a little almost like a pea sized amount of uh, red and I've got a little bit more white there so I've just got a little bit of white just a little bit more because you'll find we're going to make a nice pink color to get ourselves started with so we can just wet our brush a little bit it doesn't matter I've got some white paint on the brush I'm going to start in the middle and I've just got a bit of white in there and I'm going to just literally almost like tickle the brush into there and I'm just going to get a nice little shade of pink so I've got that on my palette and then I'm going to start to just use my stencil just to brush the paint in. Now, what I'm doing is rather than pushing any sort of stencil, don't push the brush towards the edge of the stencil. Bring the brush around the edge of the stencil, in, stencil into the middle, because then you'll get a nice, um, well, not a sharp image, but it won't all bleed underneath. But in this experiment or this this arty experiment that you're going to do, it doesn't really matter if it slightly bleeds anyway, so that's fine. So we're gonna just do that shape there. I'm gonna do another one in that color. I might bring one over here. And again, it doesn't matter if you've used a little bit more water and it's a little bit lighter this time. Maybe have a little, let's just use the little one. You should find, I mean, depending on what size brush you've got, you should find that you'll be able to get Time you just dip the brush in a little bit more water, you'll be able to get quite a few. Okay, right, so I've done a few of those. Now I can bring, if I bring my palette back into view, what colour should I? I want to make it a little bit darker, so I can afford to bring in a little bit more of the colour red or the magenta into the middle. So we're looking at tones of the, of the colour. And now I can go in and do a few more. So keep turning the stencil around. So by doing that, that means that the, the image that you're doing or using as your primary image, this being a sort of like this eggy shape stencil, isn't all in the same direction. So you've got multi-directional images, which again, when you're creating something like a surface design is good because they're not all like in rows. It doesn't mean there's an upside, right way up or a wrong way up or the bottom or the top. They're all in all different directions. They're tumbling all across page i have to say um <clears throat> that we've worked with watercolors as you say but i really like working with acrylics i don't think we've done acrylics so far and i actually really you haven't. no you like them yeah i do 
They are quite nice to use. It's really lovely about um, just putting them on. And they do have a similar quality to the watercolours because you can add more water to them and make them quite opaque. You can um, have them, you can put, apply them quite strong so they're quite dense. So acrylic paint has got a lot of uses to it. So I'm just bringing in like so. All right, got them, got, we're getting there. I've got quite a few shapes. Right, what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to just now, I'm going to, um, I think I'm gonna just make it really, I'm gonna go for really pale. So I'm gonna go really over this side. I'm gonna bring the water down and I've just literally, what color I had onto my brush, I've just literally, so I'm looking at another tone. So I've gone really quite light over here. And now I'm quite happy to lay over the top. So I'm going to lay some of the circles on top of each other and I can just, so you get like a sort of a, a, a look like so. Um, like that. So a bit like watercolor where you can layer colors. You can do exactly the same with that. How's yours going, Rachel? You need yes. to add a, you're getting so a little bit more water into your mix. So it's a little bit more, so you've got translucent so that you can see a little bit more water through them now. Yeah, that's what just- And you can, add a lot, you can add a lot more white. So you can go really, really quite, like a really light pale pink. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's coming together. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's have another one here. I feel like I want to go and paint my wall now. <laughs> <laughs> get the sponge out, get painting. I'm going to just recolor that one. If you have a look and you think I've got two to get, like over here, I had two that were really the two the same, almost like the same color. I'm just bringing in a little darker tone over the top. So they sort of work together like that. I'm going to put another darker tone. So in front of you, you see like my little palette has got lots of different tones now that I can have a look at. So if I think and I'm looking and I think, ah, I want to just put a little bit of a darker tone there, I can put a little darker tone there and there. Um, hmm. I'm quite happy with that, really. How are you doing, Rachel? So you've got yep, some... I'm just, um, I'm just going to attempt to do a a light, see, my paint is not watery enough. I don't know what I'm doing. So less paint, actual pigment paint, more from the water pot, and just then, just so it's quite watery. Okay, let's try this. You'll get some really nice translucent colours then. <laughs> I'm just using water, I'm getting splodges. <laughs> so less paint. So yes, wipe some of your, on your brush, wipe some of your paint onto a spare bit of paper if you've got some near to you. So yeah, 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 yeah. Now dip it into your water pot. Hang on a minute, let me just, okay. Right, dip it into the water pot, I'm gonna dip it in there. Right, let's give this a go. So that's more translucent, Mr. Blobby. Mr. Blobby, Blobby, Blobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's not Getting a bit. Better. Well, stuck. Don't understand. It's still quite thick. Maybe it's picking it up from the because I've got a lot on the stencil. I'm not getting, Maybe. I'm not wipe the stencil. So you've wiped the paint. So wipe the paint off the brush that you've got hardly any on there. Put it into your pot of water to give it a yeah. good swill about. And then you'll just get a wash of the tone of the colour. Better. <laughs> yeah, but uh, look, it's not, it's not, now it's just like turning into aliens. <laughs> That's all right. Leave it. Don't. Don't try and play, don't try and sort of like, it's allowed to go outside the, outside the stencil. It's allowed to go out there. That's it. Just that, lift that up. Okay. 
<laughs> and remember, the brush isn't really, so I've dipped it into the water. I've got most of the water off, and then I'm working from the outside. So your approach is from, so you're going from, let me just show you on my stencil. So I'm going to do one more stencil, a dark, I think I'll do a darker one here. So I'm going to just pick up, literally, it's quite a dry brush. I haven't got low, you can hardly see the paint on there. And then I'm coming from the edge into the middle, edge into the middle, edge into the middle, edge into the middle. So I'm getting, it's not, it's more like dry brushing, really. Yeah, I think my stencil is too um, painty now. That's fine. I've got enough shapes on there. That's fine. That's all right. Fine. Okay. I, I right. still enjoyed myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not. So if you've got a lot of paint on there um, and it's quite thick with paint, what you could do, what I'm going to get you to do, is just give it a little bit of a just a tickle, a tickle with the with the hair dryer because it's we want the paint. We want the paint still to be a little bit wet because we're now going to put just a clear white brush around so the paint starts to now smudge. So okay. we're going to just do this. <laughs> right. right. So, so now we're going to use the big brush and just some clean water. So we haven't yeah. quite dried it off completely, but we're just going to put the water over and we're just going to let, and hopefully you'll also bleed a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit more wash into there because I just want to add a little bit of colour. So it hasn't dried completely. It's a bit more. I just got some new water. Right. So I'm just literally just going over the hot. Am I going? I'm not going over the shapes. I'm going in between then. No, you go over so they bleed. So just what you want is for your 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 shapes to slightly bleed a little yeah. bit. Are they bleeding? Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's nice. I like that. Yeah. Beautiful. So pick up. Plenty of water, it's allowed to be wet because so we're going to dry it with the hairdryer in a minute. I must say hello to some of our regulars who are watching, Gary, because we do have some regular fans now. Have we? Yes. Are, 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 they, are, they, are they just watching? Yeah, well, are no, they? they're playing because we often see their makes on Instagram. Please, if yes. you haven't made anything, Tag us in at Crafty Monkeys and at Gary Mills Designs. All the uh, details are in the box below. Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we've got a lovely lady called Dawn. She's often doing things and she's just so talented. She, everything she does is just so wonderfully creative. Um, we've also got Kim, of course, who is from the Art Supply Posse. She was a lady who interviewed them last week and she's awesome. now a regular fan. I know Julianne Fishwick loves having a little look at us. Uh, we've got <laughs> Rachel, of course, the Crafty Nomad. Um, but yeah, notes from the Nomad. Uh, Rachel is a watcher as well. Um, and we've had Helen here. So um, Tracy Santry, she's a regular. So hello to anybody, really. But uh, yeah, we've had some lovely comments and we do read them all. Sure. And it's always nice yeah. to hear from you. And we just, what I love is, is just, like I say, with that lady, um, Kim, you know, I didn't know that she'd had that experience, but to hear that she just thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to sit down and do this. And she went and got some rubber bands. And she said, you know, the 20 minutes she said she got my, I got my watercolour paints that I've not touched for two years. And she said the joy I got. Just the play. I can't tell it's you. A play. It was exactly. just fantastic. So have you got that quite nice and wet now, Rachel? Yes, I have. Good. So now what I want you to do is now you're going to pick up something. You can pick up a lid of something. It yeah. could be... Um, a, I've got the top of what's it? Oh, my milk, my milk carton, and you've yeah. got the um, a candle just holder there. And then just probably, I'd say in your strongest color, so the strongest color on your palette, just dip that in. So I'm just using the where I've got this magenta, and I'm just drip, dipping it in where I've got my paint, and I'm just going to then continue on the wet, and I'm just going to overlap some of those circles. So I think for you, Rachel, you need some more overlapping on yours, some of yours, so you can have them. And you're just going to go along. Oh, I've just squashed my thing. <laughs> That's the problem with these tea holders. They're a bit squidgy. Oh, are they? It's all right, though. It's all right. All right. We'll get there. I think I was a bit overzealous. Thought I was doing potato painting for a second there. <laughs> like when you That's know, it. Perfect. So, Rachel, you see, as I've gone, sort of, you use the circle to link them together so you can have them overlapping. So I've gone all the way around. So you make sure you, that's it. Yeah. That's so much better. That's lovely now. Lovely. Do you know, I like that. once again, yeah. the moral of the story is don't give up. Because when I was looking at my splodges, I was comparing myself to you. 
you I are was getting a bit disheartened. I was like, this is not working. Why am I not getting the pastel? And now I'm looking at it going, love it, love it. <laughs> okay. Cool. Really good. That's enough. So now we're both going to dry with the hair dryers because we're going to, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put some uh, pencil marks in, but we can't really do that on, on the, um, while it's wet, unless yeah. you're using, unless you you might have in your um, stash of um, art materials, watercolor pencils. Now then watercolor pencils, yes, you can draw on wet paper, but I would again be cautious because wet paper has a tendency to tear. So if you're a bit vigorous with your drawing, then don't do it. But we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it as they're just ordinary biros, pencils or whatever you've got, we're gonna just dry it. So we're gonna give it a dry now. Okay. It won't take long. No. Okay. Right. right. So now, now we can go with our pencil. So we can even do a little bit of our little doodling. And so, first of all, I just think because we're now used to circular shapes, you're just going to use sort of circulars. You can go round where you've got um, a circle. So you can just go really quickly. Don't try and do like round the edge. Just real like scribble circles around. Could go round a sort of. But they can overlap, so you can do overlap ones as well. And if you've done a few of those, that's fine. And then you can then doodle into some of the circles, so you could do some little lines, just some. So again, that's a slight change in the in the pattern. So you've got lots of circles, lots of spirals, and sort of curved image. Now you can just do so in now and again, just do some straight lines within some of the smaller circles that you've created. I've actually just picked up some um, glitter pens as well. Some Have you? Yes. <laughs> Watch they're out. I know, Watch they're called out. glitter doodling pens. I don't think you can see that much glitter on them. If they caught the light, you would, but they're very nice to work with. They feel very nice. Okay. Yeah, I just, I'll just show you there. Doodlers glitter. Oh, so they're like a biro type pen. They're like yeah. a biro. They really, they do show up. So the what you've been doing is like, did you do some dots around that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're nice. I like that. I'm going to do some dots. Good stuff. Right. And again, don't overwork this. Like all the things that we've done in the past, they don't overwork. Now, if you have used, um, like I said, if you've used some watercolor pencils, if they are, you've used the pencil, then just with a wet brush, you can just go round the circles with a wet, if they smudge. Even if you've got ink that smudges, you might just want to just slightly smudge the line if you want to, but that's entirely down to you. And the other thing you can do, which is one of my favorites, is a few little splats going across it. So you can get the white paint. Now be careful where you're doing this. Try not to, like I'm at my desk, try not to flick it all over everywhere. But if you load up your brush with some nice wet gooey paint, you can tap some nice flicks of white over the work as well. And that looks There you go. So I think, how's yours, Rachel? I've just <laughs> added a touch of yellow. Have you now? Well, a Look bit of gold. How... A bit of gold. Yeah. Just there. Right. I think. That's great. That's cool. So you could use it if you were wrapping up a present or say, for instance, even if you went and picked some flowers out the garden, you're taking them around to someone that's, you know, maybe feeling a bit poorly or whatever. They oh, I'll just get some flowers from the garden. You could get your flowers and then you could use this to just wrap around the flowers just as something really nice, better than a piece of just brown bait parcel paper. It just looks it's just something a little bit more fun and funky, a little bit of color, a little bit of energy within the within your artwork. I've just signed it. I've signed my artwork. I'm so <laughs> proud of it. I'm so proud of it. Um, hang on, I'm Rachel, gonna that. Rachel Rothko or Rachel Enim. Rachel Enim. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, it's gonna happen. <laughs> Get me off. 
I'm the gonna... Royal Academy is ready for oh, us. Oh, it's ready. It's, I tell you, I am going to be, you know, submitting. Then suddenly people will be approaching. I'll be worth millions, Rodney. Millions. <laughs> There you are. I got your splats That's on. My splats. That's it. Fab. Yeah. Really nice. Perfect. So that's good. So I would say, I mean, we probably we don't need to do it now, but you could dry that or just leave that to dry naturally. Yeah. And then because obviously you've still got some wet paints, you know, you've just splatted it. And um, but no, I think that's that's great, Rachel. You need to turn turn it into camp on, on your camera, turn it into landscape so we can see. That's it. We've got it in completely. Lovely. That's, That's it. it. There you go. Yay. Very nice. I yeah. like these sort of the linear lines that have just gone. You've got some linear lines where you put the brush through and it just sort of scrapes and paints through yeah. as well. That's quite nice too. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much, lovely Gary. Um, and of course, that will be going on my wall of fame. <laughs> I've signed it. Look there, at the bottom. Look, signed it. Oh, there you are. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, and I'm very impressed now because look at my hands. I've actually got artist hands. I've been waiting for those hands, yeah. and now they're here. Too bad. <laughs> um, no, lovely. And you know, once again, I will just reiterate that when you, I saw that on Instagram yesterday, and I wouldn't know how to put that together. And so what I might have done is picked up some watercolor paints and tried to do some circles and and whatever. Mm -hmm. And yes, I may have come up with something kind of similar but I think what we're doing is we're just kind of expanding it a little and going well there's several techniques in here you know there's the watering down of acrylics I didn't know you could water down acrylic paints like that I thought it would split <laughs> like oil I was thinking of oil so you know the fact that you can water down yeah. get different colors use something for the circles the stencil the watering the hair dry the splat on it bringing things together doodling it's just all different little techniques that give you it's not only give you the end result but what they've just given us gary is 25 minutes of play and once yeah. again i lost myself in it i lost myself in it i love it i absolutely love these fridays i really do yeah, yeah absolutely lovely. well <laughs> lovely gary thank you so much as always and thank you to you lovely youtuber please do hit the subscribe and like if you hit the bell ding -dong. You will know when we have uploaded. We do upload every Friday. I always say this, if you are also into your sewing, we have got hundreds of professional sewing videos from some amazing, amazing quilters. And you can learn blocks, traditional blocks, more sort of improv things. You can learn projects and how to make things. Gary himself has done some lovely things like a makeup brush holder. So do have a look on the rest of the channel because it's certainly a diverse channel. There are also chats, um, there's top tips, uh, Gary and I did money saving tips as well in your creative endeavours. So do have a look through the uh, the playlists and uh, enjoy yourself as you go. Uh, all the links are below as well if you want to have a look at the Crafty Monkeys website to see if you would like to do any classes like art classes with Gary or sewing classes. And uh, do make sure you follow uh, lovely Gary, Gary Mills Designs on Instagram and Facebook and here on YouTube, of course, as well. Right, we will see you in next week's Tea Time tutorial. Whatever. That was <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. Ooh, messy hands. <laughs> <laughs>